So today, what I thought we'd do is look at this, which is the Z80. It's the CPU from my RC2014 uh, computer. And we're going to combine it with one of these. This is a rip-off Arduino, made by those people. And I'm going to somehow connect the two together and then monitor the pins and see what's going on. If you look at this Z80, you'll notice, if you can read it, that it was made in 2018. So even though this is a device that was used back in the 80s, they still seem to be making them. This is the user manual and it's got a copyright date on the bottom of 2016. And inside it, there was a page that was showing all the updates that were still happening. But what I'm going to do is make use of some of this and figure out how to connect it all together. So in here somewhere is the wiring diagram. And we're going to make use of that. And then we're going to make use of this, connect the two together and somehow use my PC to monitor what's going on with all the different pins, which sounds like quite a lot of fun. So here's the data sheet for the Z80. If we look at it, we can see it's got 16 address lines, eight data lines, there's then ground, five volts and a clock. Then there's control lines here, which will tell us the state of the CPU and allow it to control other things. So there's a reset line, there's a halt, there's a read and a write on this M1 pin, which is quite useful later on. Conveniently, you put a clock in, it does its thing, and you can see what's going on on the address and data bus. So we're going to connect to those using an Arduino. So I can literally just connect the address and data bus up to the data pins on this, connect up the clock and monitor what it's doing. The point of doing all this, by the way, is so that I can learn how this CPU works. I've built a computer, but I don't quite know how it works. I just know that I switch it on and either CPM or basic turns up. What I want to know is how this, which is the ROM board, connects to the CPU board and how it all works together with some RAM and how combining all that together makes a computer. Okay, I actually want to understand how all these different connections are arranged such that the machine works. So today what I'm going to work out is how to connect the Arduino and the Z80. The general idea is that if I can connect these two together with nothing else in between and supply a clock, I can monitor how this functions. And then I can start to add other sections like RAM and a ROM and work that out afterwards. So here's a small circuit that will work as the clock. It's got 555 timer, some associated bits and pieces, and then a button. So press the button, light comes on. It's a nice debounce circuit. I can't make it trigger twice. So if you look on the scope, you can see that it's a nice stream of pulses. The only thing, if I hold down the button, it makes a really long pulse, which is not really what the CPU wants to see. So I'm just going to go and see if I can make this a single shot button where you press it and it goes off after a certain amount of time rather than just let me hold it on like this. Okay, so I've modified the clock slightly. It now has this extra circuitry connected to the button. So now when I press it, the light comes on, which means there's a pulse. But if I hold it, there's still only one pulse. So I can't hold down the button and have a massive long pulse. So now that should work slightly better for controlling the computer. Right, on to the next bit. So somehow I need to connect all these things together. I need to connect the clock to the CPU to the Arduino using a bunch of cables or something. But I don't want to take that chip out and put it in a board. I don't want to have a massive jumper wires going off this to here. So what I'm going to use is the, the back plane. Conveniently, on the back plane, they've listed all the different pins. So I can use that to connect everything together. And I've got a load of these. So that's what I'm going to do next.
now the boards are all connected together. So I've got the Arduino connected to the back plane, the CPU is in its socket in the back plane, and my little clock generating circuitry is also connected. So just to go through how it's connected then, this is the address bus on the Z80, and it goes from A0 to A15. That goes through this big fat cable here onto Arduino pins 23 down to 53, but it's the odd pins. So we've got 23, 25, and so on to 53. The data bus is down here, and this is connected to pins 22 down to 36, and they're the even pins. And then over here, we've got clock, which is the orange connector here and that one is going to pin 2. 5 volt and ground are connected to the, the DC input and I'm going to power the Arduino using the USB connector so actually I need to plug in if I can find a cable that's the right colour. Uh, do I have a black one? Maybe, maybe not. There's one. So I need to hook the ground of the Arduino up to the ground of this. Otherwise, things won't be right. So we'll connect one on there. And then this thing's full of grounds. They're all over the place. There's apparently one just there. So, anyway. These we won't worry about at the moment, but later I'm going to look at some of these. But we've got clock, we've got 5 volt and ground coming through this. The clock is powered from this. The Arduino is powered from the PC. So everything is now connected. The next thing to do is look at the code that I'm going to run on the Arduino and see if we can make it see what the CPU is doing. Right, so at the moment, everything is connected as it should be. I've got the power switched off. The Arduino is hooked up to my PC. If you can see the little light that's on. So now, here on my computer, um, this is the Arduino sketch that I'm running. It's got a few definitions at the top. So we've got an array of all the pins here. So that's the address pins. We've got the data pins there. And then some defines for different um, inputs and control lines for the CPU. At the moment I'm just looking at that one. These I will play with later. So in the setup routine all we're doing is going through each of those pins and setting it to be an input. Same for the data ones. So that means all these inputs. So the big ribbon cable here and the smaller ribbon cable there. They're all now set to be inputs. I do the same for all the other clock and whatever. I start a serial terminal and then I attach an interrupt to the clock and that's on pin two, which because that's connected to the clock on the Z80, whenever the clock pulse from the Z80, which actually comes from my separate clock board happens, an interrupt will fire on the Arduino on the rising edge which is this on clock function here. All this does, well, all, it kind of does a bit, I suppose. It has an output buffer. It has two unsigned integers to store the data. And it just goes through reading each address line. And if it's high, it outputs a one. If it's low, it outputs a zero. It then builds up the 16 bits by doing this little bit of arithmetic here. So it takes the address, it shifts it up by one, it then adds on the new bit that it's found, which is either a one or a zero, and eventually that'll make up the whole 16. It then prints that as a pattern of ones and zeros. It then prints a space, and it then does the same for the data. So if it reads a, a high value on the pin, it'll return a one in bit. That is then added to whatever's in data and data is shifted up by one. 
and that happens eight times and it's printed out. We'll then do a bit of um, prettifying of the output. So I take the address and I print it as a hex number. I take the data and print it as hex and print that out. And that is the entire program. So now let's see it running and see what it looks like. So upload it. If I go into the um, serial monitor, so you can see nothing's happening. I'll just turn on the CPU. Still nothing's happening. But now, as I press the clock button, you can see the LED on the clock board is flashing. And that means the CPU is stepping through one of its steps in its cycle. And you can see that no matter how long I hold down a button, it only does one. I can't accidentally press it and get three. So what does this data mean? Well, at the moment, not a lot. This is what's on the address bus. This is what's on the data bus. And this is that same data converted into hex. And this is just complete random garbage. If you look on the board, the data bus isn't actually connected to anything. It's connected to the Arduino as an input, but that just effectively means the Arduino is not there. There's no data present on the data bus. So whenever the CPU tries to read something to execute it, it just gets back noise and whatever else. If I was to touch these pins with my fingers whilst pressing it, various patterns would appear. So that's what the next part is going to be. It's going to be getting some sort of EEPROM, putting a piece of code in it, and then stepping through, trying to work out what's going on with all this data, trying to make it do predictable things. If I just move the entire machine out of the way and go back to the manual, we can see that there are timing diagrams and there are very specific things that happen. So there's a machine cycle where it does an opcode fetch, it does a memory read and it does a memory write and that's one instruction cycle and it lasts a specific number of clock ticks. So I can make my Z80 do this and then look on the screen and I should be able to match up what's happening. It does require me to also monitor all the different lines. So I need to know when the clock changes and what this memory request line is doing and what M1 is doing. So later on, all those will be hooked up and I'll try and make this output look a bit nicer than just a big string of hex and binary. I should be able to make it print out something a bit more meaningful. So as I step through the code, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on. And that's what I want to do. But that's for another time. For now, I'm just quite happy that I've managed to get it so that I can press a button and the CPU steps through itself one item at a time. I'm not too bothered that all this is garbage and nonsense at the moment because that's the next thing to figure out. So when I've figured that out, I'll show you what I've managed. But for now, see you later.